If the children feel neglected, there's just always something taking time away from us. The minute you're on the phone, they want your attention. Any mom knows that. Get the chaos under control. You decide to open a school inside your house, you're getting ready to have a 13th child. You don't have time to run a school. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. Today's going to be a changing day in your life. Michelle and Rod have been married for 29 years, and they have 12 children. That's right, count them up, 12, ranging from 28 years old to six, and number 13 is due in two months. Michelle says their supersized family life is never boring, really, and never lonely. But everything is a big production, from laundry to lunch, and getting to Los Angeles without leaving anyone behind. Take a look. My husband and I have been married for 29 years. We have 12 children. Tuesday, 28. Iron Rod, 26. Borden, 24. River, 22. Sunshine, 19. Night, 17. Chantry, 15. Ozias, 13. Rush, 10. Daily, 9. Um, Raiden, 6. Six. We both always wanted a large family. Hey, you little people, come here. Where's Raiden? Ozias? It can be expensive raising a large family. We spend sixteen to eighteen hundred dollars a month in groceries, which is equivalent to our house payment. In one month alone, we're gonna go through twelve gallons of almond milk, sixteen dozen eggs, and about a hundred rolls of toilet paper. In one week, you could expect me to do at least twelve loads of laundry. Our house definitely isn't big enough for a family of fourteen. It was probably crazy to buy a four-bedroom house. I have four kids in one bedroom. That's ridiculous. This disaster, chaos, mess is theirs. This fan totally fell out of the roof. The chaos is taking over. Go check it. Five, four, three. Uh, you've got to check the tape. I'm about to give up. Our turtle's coming in. He's not allowed in. Well, here we are, YouTubers. Hello, boys and girls. Michelle has a YouTube channel. I thought it would be a good resource for moms to get support and encouragement. But I told you I had so much I wanted to say, and I really have to say it. I don't like how it takes time away from the family. And sometimes the kids get neglected when she has the old recording sign on the door. I think my children are neglected. That's what it's like being a mom. I mean, you're 24-7. You don't get days off. You're just constantly having to work. Hey, you, stop. I just don't know where it ends. My husband and I are often on the verge of divorce. The good thing is we're usually ready to get a divorce on the weekend, and the lawyers are closed on the weekend. Good morning, boys. You guys need to get up and get ready. I've got to get the kids up. We've got to get going because we're going to the Dr. Phil show today. All right, let's go. It's 8 o'clock. It's time to leave. Everybody grab your backpack. Your teeth should be fresh. Your hair should be done. Let's go. Brought your wallet. You can buy something cool. All right, let's roll. No. If anyone needs to go potty, this is the time to do it. We're going to be stopping at a quick stop. Have a good day. We're here, we've arrived. Dr. Phil, we made it, and boy, do we need help. Well, all 14 family members made it here in one piece, but don't let their smiles fool you. It's not all one big happy family with this clan. The children complain their mom, Michelle, spends too much time on her YouTube channel while their dad, Rod, is away working three jobs to pay the bills, which leaves no time for the 12 of them. My parents have been married 29 years now, and I believe they've moved at least 28 times. All right, let's go, it's time to leave. Michelle does have a hoarding issue. In my bedroom, you'll see, I have stacks and stacks of boxes. I'm drowning in the amount of clutter that we have. We have boxes in our bedroom. Can't believe I'm bringing you in here. This is all stuff I need to sort. This is the master. 
Master chaos, I call it. The garage is a monster. I hate being in here. It makes me feel like crap. I have so much clutter. Even if I work on it, it's like a merry-go-round, and it just keeps coming back, coming back. My parents' relationship was very rocky. They didn't seem happy together, and I never really felt like they liked each other. I never really had any solid friends growing up because I knew we'd be moving again anyway. There's always someone begging for my mom's attention. Go pick up five things on the kitchen floor right now. Money's always been tight. There wasn't a lot of food in my house. Does anybody have an option here? We have a lock on the pantry so that the kids can't steal food. My mom was pretty much always pregnant or nursing. I don't think my parents should have any more children after this one, and they should focus on the ones they already have. Well, OK, I'm glad you guys are here. So Rod and Michelle, well, let's meet their basketball team. <laughs> All right, Tuesday, Chantry, Ripton, Sunshine, Rush, Raiden, Iron Rod, Knight, Daly, Borden, River, Ozias. All right, so this is the gang, huh? Okay, do you know all their names? I do. All right. And their birthdays. And their birthdays, huh? All right, you know all their names? I do. All right, good. Why 12 kids? Uh, originally, the plan was to have 13, and uh, we just had them one at a time. I knew since I was a child that I wanted to have 13 kids. I don't know why, it just was in my mind. Okay, well, wait, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> you, you can't just say that to me. I don't know why I just want to have 13 kids. <laughs> why did you want to have 13 kids? Why not two or 20? Why, why 13? Why just like a, to... an impression and a, a feeling I had. I, I came from a big family. I How thought, many? well, 12. So you came from 12 mm -hmm. and wanted to do it again. I, I wouldn't say it was exactly like that. I just liked, I thought having siblings was awesome, so I wanted to make sure they had an awesome life with lots okay. of siblings. Is this a good thing, bad thing? Does it feel good thing? Uh, it feels like it's a small family. If, 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 you, if you think this is a good thing, raise your hand. Okay. There, there are challenges that come with there being 12, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah of course. Okay, what's the biggest challenge? Anybody just speak up, raise your hand. Uh, I, I'm Ozias. There's just, just a lot of clutter sometimes, uh, which is pretty, I don't know, given with the 12 kids. It's, it's just a mess in most of the rooms. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. What do you want to say? Um, my name is Sunshine. Right. I feel like a lot of people get left out in the family. Just, I think all of us at one point have felt left out. And just kind yeah. of feeling lonely sometimes. Yeah. With so There's many people so around you, it hurts worse that way. <laughs> Tuesday, you're pregnant. Yeah. And so is your mom. Yes. So what's it like being pregnant at the same time as your mother? A lot different than I would have uh, pictured when I was a kid. You know, when I, so I guess growing up, um, I was always afraid that I would be like, you know, 19, getting married, and my mom would be pregnant, and then I'd be pregnant, and then we'd have kids of like the same age, and it'd be really awkward. Um, but... Now that you know, I'm 28, and I'm married, and um, I already have a child, and this is my second. And are you, so, how many are you going to have? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, do you have I'm, this? Do you have this need to have like well, 12? Well, she started at 18, <laughs> so uh, so I don't have as much time on my, uh, you know, to to have that many children. So I'll probably probably stop around four or five, or who knows. Okay, River, how old are you? 22. You're 22. So is your mom giving this front row enough attention? Uh, I think the attention dwindled from the start to the finish. So you were fourth. Yes. Right. And so do you think it's tough for them to get the attention because there's so many now? Uh, you know, attention always goes to the firstborn one. Any older child is mad when their kid has another, but you know, as, you know, the distance is so far between now, it's like that attention is now in the first and the end, and then the rest of us just kind of, yeah. we just kind of sit. So, Rod, you work three jobs, right? Yes. So, what's your relationship with these children? Well, um, <laughs> I, uh, I, I am gone a lot. How many hours a week do you work? Uh, like 80 to 100. 
80 to 100 hours. Feel like a single parent sometimes? Absolutely. Michelle and Rod have moved 28 times in 29 years. Why can't they stay in one place? They're going to tell us about that when we come back. Is there a point at which you said, my staying pregnant all of the time is not fair to the children that I have? I was just thinking, they're so cute, have another. And later... We have this battle going on and I can't stop it. You know, you're bordering on becoming a hoarder and you're being evasive. You've blown a lot of money gambling. Tomorrow, a Beverly Hills teen. Why are you carrying a purse? It's my child. Claims she's addicted to looking perfect. Instead of going to salons, I prefer my own glam squad. You spend 7,000 a month on your appearance. At least. Why did you stop going to school? Because it would take me three hours to get ready every morning. Do you judge people that are not perfect? Absolutely not. I mostly focus on myself. We know that. That's tomorrow. Then on Monday, who's to blame? You have to be a monster. For her daughter's bad behavior. We're going to take a break right now because now I'm manipulative and now I'm the bad person again. That's Monday. Okay, Michelle and Rod have 12 children ranging in age from 28 to 6 years old. And number 13 is actually due in two months. Now, the children say they rarely get individual attention from their mom because she's too busy being pregnant. She's too busy YouTubing. Their dad, well, they say he's never around, and he just said, yeah, they're right. I sometimes work 80 to 100 hours a week. Take a look. My husband works all the time. We do fight a lot because of the extra hours I work. He's actually taken on a third job so that he could help provide for our family. My dad was barely around for me, and when he was around, he was either sleeping or hanging out with the boys. I'd basically have to beg for his attention. If you're not demanding his attention and he can get away with being on his phone, he will do that. A lot of the kids are having problems right now. They need some of his attention. He's not there to give it to him. My relationship with my dad doesn't really exist. It kind of felt like he was more of a stranger living in my home. On his days off, he will just come home, crash. He is barely functioning. OK, now, I have some statements from your children, because we asked them a lot of questions. And they were very forthcoming, by the way. Uh, and so here are some of their statements. According to Tuesday, growing up between ages 8 and 12, my bonding experience with my dad was getting breakfast, and then we'd go to an AA meeting with him. According to Iron Rod, I feel like I don't really know my dad. I know him on a surface level. I think maybe he doesn't know how to connect like that with us. And then, according to River, I'm realizing right now that drugs are what it took to get my dad's attention. That sucks, and it hurts. Respond to those comments. Yeah, they're, they're true. Um, um, geez. Um, yeah, I definitely don't, wasn't doing it right, you know. Um, I wasn't there for him. River, would you say I'm realizing now that drugs are what it took to get his attention? That sucks and it hurts. What do, What are you realizing now? Uh, when I first started using it, uh, you know, in no way was it uh, by means to get attention. It was just what I felt I needed. But the attention that he brought to me after I was using those things, like you know, it was great. But. Uh, you know, I'm sad that's what I had to come to to be there, but, you know, it, it's awesome that he was there after. Here, here's my question. I, I understand that you had this feeling that you wanted to have 12 children, 13 children, but is there a point at which you said, my doing this, my staying pregnant all of the time is not fair to the children that I have? 
Were you ever concerned about that? Absolutely not. I, I was just thinking, they're so cute, have another. <laughs> and they were growing up cute and they were just really good kids and I didn't even realize things were gonna get bad till they were almost all here. And now that number 13 was a surprise, uh, in the because I didn't think I could have any more. I mean, six years not, not using anything. I didn't think I could have another one. And here, out of the blue, I am pregnant. Did you kind of figure out how nope. this works? Oh, absolutely. That's the best part. But, but that's not what I mean. I mean, I haven't been using anything for six years, and nothing happened. Uh, Why now? She, I didn't even know it was menopause. possible. You <laughs> She thought she was going through menopause. Yes. Oh, yeah. No, that's not what it was. No, apparently not. <laughs> it was. Um, you, but you can get pregnant while you're on that. Yeah, and okay. I, as the oldest in the family, I, I always knew that my mom wanted to have 13 kids. I think towards the end, I started noticing that, like, <clears throat> that my parents are just tired. Like, they're so tired, and, yeah. they're, and they still have so much work ahead of them. Well, there are some issues. You know, I have two solid rules with children, and that is I never want to involve them in adult issues, and I never try to involve them in things over which they have no control. So because of that, because of that, we're gonna take a break, and I'm going to send the little ones backstage because Michelle and Rod do have some issues that just really aren't appropriate for young ears. Uh, the older kids have one common complaint that really worries me, and we're gonna talk about that when we come back, but we're gonna let these little ones go be little ones while the adults talk about adult things. We'll be right back. I can move on without him. I thought if we fought in front of them, at least they would know we were gonna get a divorce. And later, River, you've had suicidal thoughts. Just always have struggle with depression. I'm trying to reach out the best way I know how. It takes two minutes to walk in a room and say hello. Why can't you come say hi? Rod has had a serious gambling problem pretty much since I've known him, but very severely the last few years because it's larger amounts of money where he's blown an entire paycheck. Rod's gambling debt is a little over $40,000. Our biggest problem recently with our marriage has been porn. Ever since high school, I've been addicted. He used to attend strip clubs. He used to look at magazines, and now that there's the internet, pornography became very severe. I am so done. I don't think he's going to change, and I can't live with it like this. Well, Michelle says her husband, Rod, has had a long history of addictions and that she and her 12 children have had to live with all of this for many years. Now, we've excused the younger children so we can discuss these adult issues. And at this point, everybody's aware of what the issues are. This has been an open conversation and discussion in your family. Yes, just because I didn't understand at that time they, those things should be sheltered from kids. I thought, well, if we're going to get a divorce, I'd because my, my mom was divorced three times, and, or four times, but I, I thought if I raised them and we fought in front of them, at least they would know we were going to get a divorce, and they wouldn't be caught in the dark and wonder what happened. Yeah, well, the reason I asked, because that's 19 years ago, so y'all were involved in this when you were children. Bad idea. Right. Uh, I know so, that now. you know, I'm, I'm sorry that you guys got pulled through all of this at the time, but where do you guys stand on this issue now? You're still concerned. Yeah, still concerned. Um, just because it's been going on for so long, and to continue to see it, it just brings up bat, uh, past hurts. I had to get myself to a place where I was where my confidence was to a place where I felt like I can move on without him. For a long time, I thought I didn't have another choice. I was stuck. I'm 47 years old. I'm not 18 anymore or any other age I was before. I'm not stupid and I know that if, if, that, if I'm not what he wants, then move on. You, then what am I even here for? I, I, you don't need me. Yeah. So. What effect did this have on y'all growing up? 
Well, as I was growing up, knowing that my dad had a drinking problem, that didn't bother me. I mean, it, I was always proud of him when I saw progress in him as far as all that went. But um, I mean, I was, as a child, it really hurt me to know that I thought my parents were going to get a divorce. because um, I knew they would fight and s sometimes dad wouldn't be at and around the house for a little while because they had a fight or something. Right, uh-huh, go ahead. Um, I remember growing up a lot, I thought my parents were gonna get a divorce and so I always like thought about which parent would I go with. I don't even know which one I would wanna go with if they split up. So Rod, where are you on this at this point? I mean, are, are you, is she right to be concerned? I mean, are you drinking? Are you gambling? Are you looking at porn? Or, where are you on these issues? Well, I'm, uh, I'm making progress. The problem is, and I can't even expect her to, to believe me anymore, but I mean, I haven't done a lot of it uh, active. I haven't really had active addictions for a while now, but who knows when something else is gonna pop up. Mm -hmm. Well, how many years sober are you? 22 years without a drink. Yeah. But when he gets stressed out, he'll say, let's just go drink, or should I'm just gonna grab a drink. Maybe I, maybe I can drink like a normal person now. And that just makes me like, are you freaking kidding me? You say you're working three jobs to uh, keep this family afloat with 12 and soon 13 children. So you have to work three jobs, you have to create all this money, and then 
as it turns out, uh, you've blown a lot of money gambling, then, you know, time in terms of, of drinking, and then you say that he's looking at pornography, and that causes you to feel like, well, what, what about me? Am, am I not enough? Am Absolutely. I inadequate in some way? And, you know, I ask a question, and it, it hasn't been answered yet, and I guess we need to talk about that. Coming up, Michelle wants to know why so many of her children report having suicidal thoughts. Well, we're gonna talk about that when we come back, and we're gonna talk about the physical environment in which all of this is taking place. We'll talk about that in just a minute. The majority of my children have said that they have suicidal thoughts. The suicidal thoughts, the low self-esteem, it concerns me a lot. Why? I feel like when our marriage is not going well and strong, then the kids are suffering. I was really upset. I locked myself in the bathroom and I was crying. I put a knife on my hand, didn't actually cut it or anything, didn't draw blood. I needed my mom and dad to know, but I didn't. I don't know, it sounds like I did it for attention. I know that River does struggle with smoking, drinking, and marijuana. My 22-year-old son the other day, he never answered his phone. He's missing for two days, we don't know where he is. And in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, he drove out in the desert and put a bullet in his head. I'm just worried about the kids overall. Well, Michelle says her supersized family of 12 children, going on 13, is full of problems from addiction to clutter, to finances, but many of the children feel neglected and say their mother is always busy nursing, being pregnant, YouTubing, or paying the bills. And their father is just a man that lives in their house who they don't really know. Um, now, as I say, we've asked the children lots of questions, and in doing so, we've found despair in a lot of these children. Um, and River, you yourself have said that, that you know, you've had suicidal thoughts. Um, are you aware that some of your siblings have as well? Yeah, most definitely. Here's a statement from 13-year-old Ozias. He says, I know why I have depression. My parents are gone and occupied a lot. My mom has to pay a lot of bills. She does a lot of YouTube. She's pregnant, so it's hard. The reason I put the knife on my hand was a cry for help last week. My way of letting them know I need more one-on-one -on -one time. Um, well, what I want to say is that you know, when a, when a mom's on a telephone call and the, the kids, you know, they can be busy and doing all their fun things that they do. The minute you're on the phone, they want your attention. Any mom knows that. That's just normal. You're trying to use the restroom. They're going to knock on the door. I literally spend maybe 30 minutes to do bills. I go through them. I have a system. I go really fast. I spend about 30 to 45 minutes a day on doing a YouTube. I'll do a 15-minute video, edit it real quick, or uh, put the tags and stuff on it, make sure that, and then post it, and then I'm done. But when I'm cooking in the kitchen, why not talk to me then? Why not talk to me when I'm cleaning up? Why not? I'm not doing anything. Tuesday's got that figured out. Sunshine's got that figured out. When I'm working, just follow along with me because I'm just doing that. I'm just... So, Sunshine, tell me what you're thinking and feeling right now. When you're showing, or when you're reading that quote from Mosias, I was just thinking about how awful that is, and I didn't hear about it. I didn't know about it, so it makes me really upset but also just connecting with how he felt. It takes two minutes to walk in a room and say hello. I hate a text that says hello. Why can't you come say hi? I agree, I do. I just don't know what else to do. Like I've tried really hard to do things right and make sure they have their clothes and make sure they eat and make sure that they, you know, I take them on dates and we just go out to dinner once in a while, just one of them at a time, sometimes two of them at a time, try to make them feel special on their birthday and take them shopping. I mean, I'm trying to reach out the best way I know how. I'm giving my kids more attention than I got. That doesn't make it okay. 
I mean, I'm a good parent, but if a good parent is causing kids to be depressed and be on drugs and still have all these problems, then what good is it? I need to be an extraordinary parent. So how do I get from being a good parent to being a better parent? We have this battle going on and I can't stop it. Well, you know what I do know is no matter how long you talk or how loud you say it, it doesn't change the way they feel. I agree. I also know that the downstairs of your house looks one way, mm -hmm. and the upstairs of your house looks another way. I agree. And to me, it's like the downstairs of your house is what you want to present to the world, and the upstairs of your house Let it loose. is how you feel inside. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, you're bordering on becoming a hoarder. Yeah. And you need that like you need a hole in the head. Amen. And you're being evasive. I asked you where you stand on this, and you said, well, you know, I haven't had a drink in a long time, but I have an addictive personality, and uh, so on the other things, I'm kind of... Uh, and that means you got a ticking time bomb because she's drawn a line in the sand herself and says, if you're regressing to that, she's out of here, right? Absolutely. One thing I want is change. And I want to be, I want to be the parent that they need. In two months, Michelle will give birth for the 13th time. And this time it might not be as easy as the first 12. We're going to talk about that and start making some plans when we come back. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. You spend 7000 a month on your appearance. I have my own glam squad. Do you judge people that are not perfect? I mostly focus on myself. We know that. That's tomorrow. My wife's pregnant with child number 13. I'm 47 years old. We found out that this baby has a very likely chance of Down syndrome. If my life is already this bad and I have a baby with Down syndrome on top of it, that's not going to be a good place for this baby. It's hard enough to function in a dysfunctional home, let alone adding one more child to the mix. It's unknown right now whether it's going to be a high-functioning Down syndrome child or low-functioning. It makes me nervous. Am I going to be able to keep up with the needs of a special child? Mike Baer is a life coach who is respected by his clients. He's helped a laundry list of A-list celebrities get and keep their lives on track. He works with people from all walks of life. He focuses on his clients breaking free of destructive patterns. Uh, his new book is called Best Self, Be You Only Better. It comes out on January 8th. Uh, <coughs> coach Mike, you and I have talked about this hours on end. I think, Rod, when you talk about having an addictive personality, I think at this point you're having an escaping personality. And you're escaping the very things you need to do in this family. And I think the most important thing is we start to align the two of you because you guys control how this family is going to function. You two are going to have to make a decision that we're going to take divorce off the table here. You need some help. This is not something you can white knuckle and willpower your way through. You need some help and I'm gonna get it for you. And I don't want, I don't want to pass it on to all my children either. I mean, you know, like what <clears throat> River said. I got uh, it, I got it. And there's, uh, we're gonna deal with that. But I want you two to agree you're gonna take that off the table for right now. If you wanna get a divorce, um, you can do that in 90 days. <laughs> What I want you two to do is be a team right now. I want you to be a team right now because you're going to lead this family down a path where we're going to do some stuff. You have some issues as well. You've had a lot of things happen to you growing up, and you need to heal some of these wounds, and there's very specialized help that you need for that, and I'm going to arrange for that for you. So you two do have some clinical issues, and we're going to deal with those. I'll tell you how as we go on. 
but are you willing to make some dramatic changes in the way your family pattern is going? Absolutely. Because yes, you're doing some definitely. things that are really not smart. Yeah, help me out. And I'm just talking just, <laughs> sure. and, and I'm just going to have to just throw you a common sense alert here. Common sense <laughs> alert. All right. It's We've, not so common anymore, right? No, it's not. <laughs> and number one, you wanted to talk about this homeschooling, right? I do. I think the, the first step is if is to get rid of homeschooling and have your kids go to public school for two, two reasons. Can I tell you why we homeschool? I don't care. <laughs> oh, I do. I don't know. <laughs> Look. Let me tell you why. You have more kids than Carter's got little pills. You have more things to do than you can shake a stick at. So you decide to open a school inside your house? Common sense alert. You don't have time to run a school. You're getting ready to have a 13th child. You don't have time to run a school. You need to put your children in school and let the school run the school. You don't have the manpower to run the school. But it takes me three hours. That's less time than I spent when they were in school. Okay. Then do it your way. Well, the problem we'll is... We'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, we're back. Coach Mike, uh, she's bucked at the very first thing we've said, so I don't know if there's any point in going on. That's probably the only thing I would buck. Well, but, you, but no, that's, I'm, me, not, me, no me. I'm not negotiable. Number one's not negotiable, but go to number two just so they know what they're missing. Go ahead. Okay. So number two would be bringing a home organizer to clean out and streamline the house. We're talking about bringing in a team, getting rid of all of this clutter, cleaning this house up, setting up an organizational plan so this house becomes an efficient, organized house, and all of that stuff is gone where this house is cleaned up and everybody has a nice, clean, sanitary place to live. You got a problem with that? Dr. Phil, Dr. Phil has worked with thousands of families. You've come here to ask for help. And I would just suggest, um, since your way is currently not working, sometimes we need to surrender to win. And That's we may- the only thing that is working. <laughs> homeschooling failed with me. It didn't work. I learned to read, but I'm not good at anything else in schooling, really. And I've, it hasn't been very helpful in my life. And I'm glad that it's working for her now to homeschool, but I think it's just safer to just put them through school. And I know that school isn't easy and there are bullies and awful people like that, but if they have a home to come to after school where the family is doing well and happy and like where we're functioning right, then it won't be a problem as much at school, you know? 
I didn't learn how to read till I was like 12 years old. Not saying there's anything wrong with homeschooling because it's a great, you know, opportunity and a great way to grow up. Like I grew up with all my siblings and we had a blast all the time, but after I got to high school, I, I could barely, the only thing I could do was spell my name. I couldn't fill out a scan chart. I did not know what I was doing. I had to go back and learn all these steps that I should have known. Let us go to school. By the way, just so you know, I am not opposed to homeschool. There is absolutely nothing, zero, zip, not and yet, nothing wrong with a well laid out, vigorously adhered to homeschool curriculum. There's nothing wrong with that. I am not objecting to homeschool, don't get me wrong, so homeschoolers don't write me unless you are asking, <laughs> unless you are asking for an advocate for homeschooling because I think homeschooling can be very effective and and it is a, a great thing to do. Right. That's not what's happening here. No, that was crap. That was a that's crap program. That's not what's happening here. You have done homeschooling, as you call it, with kids that can't well, read until they're 11 or 12 years well, old. Let that me finish. That was his choice. Just really quick. Let me finish. Okay. Let me finish. Of course. In this situation, homeschooling is not appropriate for two reasons. Number one, it's not appropriate because you don't have the manpower to do it. You have eight kids at home and a Down syndrome child getting ready to be born. You don't have the manpower to do homeschooling, which means your homeschool children are going to suffer and not be prepared for the next level of life. And number two, you are doing it based out of fear because you had experience as a child that have left you feeling vulnerable and you have seen your children be bullied in school, so you think the only thing to do is take them out of the situation and we're bringing you resources and manpower where we will go to that school, we will negotiate with that school, and we will make sure that Ozias and your other children are protected and not left to the lions. And I could put them in school, and if you don't like the way it's going, then we could do something different, for sure. Yeah, well, three of them are thinking about killing themselves. So yeah, uh, this in school, wonderful though. program that is going so well, I think you just need to consider alternatives, and let's leave it to the life coaches. All right, look, we got to stop. I want to thank my guests today for sharing their story. A special thanks to Coach Mike Bear and Cass Sinners for providing the life coaches to help this couple. And a special thanks to One Organized Mama. They are going to teach Michelle how to clear the clutter, get organized, and create more time for her family. And I want to thank everybody at Doctor On Demand. This is the company that my son Jay and I started. If you want to have your own Doctor On Demand, go to iTunes App Store or Google Play and download the Doctor On Demand app. Then you can be face-to-face -face with a doctor in a matter of minutes on your computer, tablet, or smartphone. You can also make appointments for psychological services, whether it's a psychiatrist or a psychologist. Then you can meet with your therapist without having to leave the privacy of your own home. In this case, we're going to make Doctor On Demand available to Michelle, Rod, and all 12 of the children. So everyone.